Hi YouTube, welcome back to my channel Software Testing. It's me, Daniel. Happy that you're here today. Today I would like to talk about seven free AI software testing tools that you as a software tester can use. Because most of the tools out there are not for free available. So let's jump right into the presentation. Hey, before we start with the main video, I would like to thank you the following companies for their support. They support me through the YouTube membership program that I created for companies who care about software testing and are active in supporting the testing community. Thank you once again. If you want to learn more about the supporters, check the video description down below to find the links to their products. If you miss your logo on this page, follow the QR code or send me an email. Happy testing and now back to the main video. So as you can see on the screen, we are going to talk about seven free AI tools for software testers. So as I said just a second before, there are many tools on the market for test case generation, test data generation, test code generation, and more like visual checks, self-healing tests, and so forth and so forth. So there are many, many options as well already on the market. and. All big brands working on AI tools support the testing activities, which is really cool. So thanks for all the vendors out there working on AI features to integrate them into their testing tools to help us as software testers becoming better and more effective in software testing. And if you are a follower, and I hope so, and a subscriber to my channel, you have seen a lot of tools already on my channel. I was covering a lot of different testing frameworks, testing tools, with AI capabilities already. Yeah, so as you can see on the screen and also if you browse through my videos, you can see the different videos that I made already in terms of AI assisted software testing, AI powered test management, uh, co-pilots, uh, different AIs and stuff like that. However, they're not open source. So those vendors, they did a really great job providing their software with AI capabilities, as I said before. However, you have to pay for it. And to be honest, that's totally fine, right? I mean, they put a lot of development and discovery phases into their product development and they would like to get charged for it, right? Who wants to work for free in the long run, right? So that's why totally okay, totally fine. Um, whenever I try out these tools, I use the free trial versions. You can do the same thing. Go on the web pages, sign up for the trial version, try out the tool, see if it fits your needs or not then pick another one or stick with this one. So that's, that's completely up to you. So I did some research lately to, f to because it was triggering me like, hey, isn't there any tool on the market that is for free as a software tester for AI capabilities? And to be honest, there's not too many things, but I found seven tools that you can already use on your daily basis for free. So let's jump right into the first one. The first one that I found is called Testcraft and if you stay to the very end of the video, which I recommend you, because then you don't miss the seven tools, and I will show the demo hands-on of that tool. So, as you can see, Testcraft. What is it? It's a browser plugin based on GPT-4. And before, when I found the tool, it was based on GPT-3.5. So, at the time of the recording, in 20, end of 2024, Testcraft based on GPT-4. So, in case you're watching the video in 25, 26, or whenever, it might use a different LLM version. Yeah, The good thing is it's really easy to install and easy to use. It can generate test ideas. It can check, uh, it can check accessibility on the web product that you would like to test. It can evaluate also for accessibility, which I think is really cool. It can generate test scripts for you with JavaScript, TypeScript, Java, C Sharp or Python, which is also really cool. You can ask for test automation scripts for the tools Playwright Cypress Selenium. Also really handy in case you are already working with those tools to get an idea like what the tool is suggesting you. Yeah. And before we come to the next one is, as I meant before, it's a browser plugin available on, I think I will demo it on the Chrome browser. It's only available for web applications. So that's the drawback here, right? So you can only use it for web products that you would like to test, but better than nothing, right? So as you can see, first one checked. Let's go to the next one. It's Codium. And if you go to codium.com and as always, 
check the video links down below to find all the video links uh, or the, the two links for you to follow up with. Um, it's on their webpage, it says the modern coding superpower. And what is Codium doing? Well, it says as well here on the screen, you can see autocomplete faster than thought. Yeah. So it's a code completion tool. You can, in, uh, you can, uh, it, oh, sorry, it, it, it offers an inline job code generation, similar to GitHub Copilot because, but that's not for free. Uh, it has a chat feature to generate code, to explain the code, to refactor the code and to translate code, which I think is really handy. So you can use it as an extension for known IDEs, such as IntelliJ and others. You will find everything on, on the web page and it's free for single user. So it's kind of free. So in case you're like an in development, an independent developer, you can use it for free. If you would like to use it as a company, there is a plan for it. So that's also a thing. So this is a completely different tool. It's not directly a testing tool, to be honest with AI, but if you're a software tester using this IDEs that are um, supported, you can use it for generating test scripts, explaining existing test code or the development code or the production code. You can use it for refactoring and translation of the code. So it's cool, try it out. Um, the next one I would like to, to present you is called Kushu. And again, on the website, it says, never test your APIs manually again. And it says already, it can transform API specs in automated checks. So that's really cool. So you give the tool the API specs and voila, you get the API test automation scripts. So you can manually also prompt API tests. That's also really cool. And Kusho learns and adapts to your API specs and the code base. So in case you access, give it access to your, um, to your code base, it learns from it and it will adapt accordingly. It has a CI CD integration. It's free again for development, independent developers. So also for you to check up. The fourth tool, testing tool, is also not really a testing tool, but I thought it's really recommended from my perspective to put over here. It's called TensorFlow and it's Google's TensorFlow to create your own machine learning models. And I think that's also really important for software testers to start with, to play around with TensorFlow to create your own machine learning models to see what you can do with AI, how to train a machine and stuff like that to get a better understanding of AI, of LLMs, how they work, what you can do, how you can derive your testing activities, your testing ideas based on that knowledge. So it's for you an education, education point, not an education point, but something for you to learn on. Yeah. So you can build your own model with Python or JavaScript. You can deploy your model across different devices and platforms. That's also really cool. You, there's a great community with many pre-built models and tools. So check tensorflow.org to get an idea what the community already created. You can also download models, pre-built models and toolings to get more information about it. So that's cool. However, yeah, it's not easy to get started. So you really have to have coding skills. You have to have some, yeah, some, some machine learning skills already prepared, but I, I think if you would like to learn, if you'd like to, to explore new skills, that's the way to go. Um, as I just said, programming skills are a must have. The next tool that I'm going to present is called PyTorch, and it's an open source machine learning library that you can use. So it's used for developing and training neural networks based on deep learning models. It's also something for really highly technical stuff, techy, tech related topics and to, to go into more into machine learning and how to, yeah, to train neural networks based on the deep learning models. Yeah. Uh, it's primarily, primarily developed by Meta's AI research group. So it's a different company behind it. It has a large and active community also really great in, ter in terms, if you would like to get help, support from the community to learn uh, more about PyTorch. Uh, you can, it can be used with Python and other programming languages. So that's cool. But as the name already suggests, Python is the way to go here. Um, well, I think you have already guessed it. ChatGPT or other LLMs like Gemini or whatever's out there is also a free available testing tool. Yes. I mean, it's not really integrated into your IDE. 
if you use like the standard standalone um, applications. However, if you use Copilot or like, um, what's the name for the Google version? I, I forgot the name. They also presented lately something for their web uh, web IDE. So you also have Gemini in, in IDEs as well available. So you have them already at your hand, but you can use them for creating test cases, ideas, test code, test scripts, test data, and so forth. And I think I've done a video already on that topic as well. So ChatGPT, Gemini, and other LLMs available, publicly available, you can use already as a software tester. And I really recommend you to do so. And not only for testing activities, but maybe also for, for your communication in terms of you would like to communicate with your company, with your stakeholders, rewrite different specifications, write it in different tone of voices and stuff like that. So use them, try them out. I mean, I bet you have done that already. And yeah, that's where, where these seven free AI tools. I hope you're not too disappointed because they're not too many like, oh my God, I haven't heard about that tool. From my perspective, the one that I would like to show you right now, Testcraft is the one that is, I think is really handy in case you are testing web products. So it's really easy to in uh, install. It's just a Chrome extension. You install it and you're good to go. And with that, let's move over to the demo. So you can see Testcraft. So that's the web page. If you go to home.testcraft.app, you, you see like an introduction of the test uh, Testcraft tool. It's explained how to install it, but to be honest, clicking the button, clicking another button and it's installed. You can get more information about it, what the tool has to offer, but I will not explain it right now. You can just go ahead and try it out yourself if you have a web product or in case you go to any web page and you can start testing it. So for that quick use case, I would like to show my blog adventures in QA. You need to move around some windows here. So, and I have Testcraft already installed. And if you have it installed, you click on the Chrome extension itself, Testcraft opens up. And then you get this, this little overlay window here saying, okay, pick an element, generate test ideas, and automate and check accessibility. They are now disabled because you have to pick an element first. So before we do that, we quickly check what's behind the settings wheel here. We can see, okay, for the automation, we can, we can decide on the framework, Playwright Cypress Selenium, as I, in I mentioned in the introduction. You can use the, the programming language, JavaScript, TypeScript, Java, C Sharp, and Python. You can also provide your API key, your server URL, and in case you have an, an open API key, a paid version, you can also pick the GPT model. Let's, let's stick to the default for the demo for now. So then we say pick an element, and then you can see the overlay goes away, and then you can move around the cursor basically on your web page and let's just put like the whole main frame of my blog which contains all the blog posts and the right hand navigation so we click that and then it says element picked then you have to open test craft again and then you get a little preview of what has been picked by you and then yes you can see the buttons are enabled and then you can click yeah. generate test ideas let's do so we click the window, another uh, Chrome extension window comes up and then you get generated test ideas. So it says, what does it say here? And the cool thing is you get directly I'd like a checkbox in case you have already tested it. So it says, verify that clicking on the article titles redirects to the user to the, cor uh, the, user to the correct blog post. We can also modify it. So we can rephrase this in case we think mm, not too cool. Uh, either we use like the, the checkboxes for us as the an execution list, or we can also copy it to clipboard, import it to any tool that you would like to use, like a, like Word or like any other um, um, text editing tool. You can put the, the tests into it, um, and then you, you can also see it, it navigates or na not navigates, but it splits them into positive and negative tests. It also creates test scenarios. So for example, simulate a user with visual impairments using a screen reader to navigate the site and evaluate the accessibility of the content. Yeah, so it gives already accessibility ideas. So that's pretty cool. So we don't go through any of these steps. Yeah. So then we can see now automate, it's not available. We can say, okay, select test ideas. Let's pick the first two. So one positive, one negative, and we click automate. And then based from that ideas, it's now using Playwright and JavaScript and is providing basically 
the complete source code for that two um, test cases. So it says, okay, we have the blog page, let's checking the article titles. We have an error page. We have the blog test.js, basically the description before each. And then the two test methods like verifying, basically picking up what it has suggested as a test case before. So you can copy paste it. Of course, verify that everything is fine from a code perspective, fits to your coding standards and stuff like that. You can put it into your IDE, run it, see if it's executed or not. So yeah, it's really cool. So what else can we do is we can automate. We can say, okay, now it's like automating everything, I think. It's not picking up the, yes, exactly. It's now preparing basically a test script for all the test cases, not for all of them, but for some of them that has been um, provided. And it's also it has now the accessibility label as well. So we can check here, check accessibility. And then, oops, I have some issues, which I, I, I am aware of, just need to find a time to fix them. Now the formatting doesn't work here. So maybe there's like a little bug on TestCraft. Doesn't bother me, it's free to use. You can either see uh, if you can fix it yourself or you can live with it. But as you can see, it's Markdown. So in case you copy paste it to Markdown editor, it's again, free, uh, free formatted for you. So that's really cool. The only annoying thing that I see is that every time you do something, it's closing the window. Would be nice to have it sticky in the content window, but that's okay. So that was the little demo about TestCraft. And with that, we are at the end already of the video, talking about the um, seven tools that I prepared. And there is no last slide. Let me know down below in the comments, and that's really important for me and also for the community. What AI tools are you using as a software tester and the tools are free available? Is there anything that you have scripted on your own and you made publicly available in an open source version for us as software testers? Please share it with us, the community, and I can extend also the link list down below on the video. It will help all of us as always. And with that, I'm saying thank you. Thanks for coming by. As always, like it, subscribe it and share it to support my work, to support the community. Happy to see you again. Bye-bye.